This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to Covered in Pet Hair, a boozy show for pet lovers on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Isabel Alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with a canine fitness expert. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel Alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with a pet parent, a professional dog walker and professional pet sitter, an entrepreneur, a canine fitness coach, a canine massage therapist. She's a road tripper, a tea drinker, and a world traveler. She's a magnet collector who's originally from Miami, Florida, just like me. And she currently lives in Dallas, Texas, not that far away from me in El Paso. She is wife to Julian, dog mom to Kevin and Jenny, two Italian Spinonis. She is cat mom to Slater, a Russian blue mix that I just fell in love with. And she's beta fish mom to a fish named Thomas Shelby. She is the founder of Miami Pet Concierge, where she employs about 20 professional pet sitters to care for Miami's lovely, wonderful, spoiled pets. And she's the founder of the Packin' Method, a canine mobile gym based in Dallas, Texas. Her name is Nicole Packin'. Welcome, Nicole. It's so great to have you back on the show. It's good to be here. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm so happy to catch up with you. It's been a couple years since you were on the show. You were, I think, on my season one, and you had just conceptualized and were actually executing the packet method. So we have a lot to catch up on. But before we do that, before we do that, I'm going to introduce our drinking game for the people following at home. So anybody participating in our drinking game today, anytime you hear this word. The secret word is treadmill. Make sure you take a drink of whatever you're enjoying, but please be over 21 in the U.S. to partake. Never drink and drive and always drink responsibly. So if I recall correctly, the last time you were on the show, you had a White Claw. I did have a White Claw. (laughs) I did. I don't drink a lot. So that was what was in our house. So I did. I probably had like a raspberry White Claw. Yeah, there's no hate on White Claws. I like the mango White Claw with chamoy and tahini around the rim. Okay. So such a treat. Like chamoy is like this sweet. I always talk about it on the show because I'm in El Paso and we we have chamoy a lot. Uh, but it is like this sweet sauce that people put on like fruit here and like cocktails. And tahini, I'm sure you're familiar with, is the chili powder that's mm-hmm. kind of like lemon, lime, and chili. So you dip the actual like can yes. of mango white claw into before you open it, obviously into the chamoy and then into the tahini then you open it up and drink it and it's like it's uh, like kind of like a margarita but not Hmm. but like less fewer calories less lemony and it's mango so it's always good so i i no hate on the white claw no hate i might have to try that but i'm not a mango girl so maybe another flavor Ooh, you're from miami and you're not into mangoes no i was allergic to them ah yes Yes. Which is really common for the Floridians, right? We grow up with them it in our is. backyard. Yes, the mango tree is highly allergenic for those that don't oh, know. Yeah. And I grew up with a huge mango tree in my backyard and I suffered from awful allergies when Absolutely. it was blooming. So yes. And they were always, they were the best trees to climb. So you would come home and you would have itchy eyes and rashes <laughs> because you would climb them as kids. But yeah, I, 
I never really got into the mango. They were massive trees. They grew to be huge in South Florida. So what are you having today with us? I am having my Jinro. This is a Korean beer. To me, it tastes more like a really smooth vodka with a little flavor. I would compare it to perhaps maybe a sake, but it is really great. And this one is grapefruit, but they come in different flavors. They come in pineapple and plum and strawberry and grapefruit. Um, My favorite so far has been pineapple, but I'm trying the grapefruit with you today. You have to make sure it's chilled in your little glass and then perhaps on the rocks. Ooh, okay. So spell it for me. How does, what's the name of it? Jinro, J-I-N-R-O. You can get it at Specs. Okay, cool. I'm going to have to try it. Well, I'm really, really good. I'm I'm having a beer too, because I know you're kind of a beer drinker and this is a Texas beer. And I know that we are both in Texas. So this is called True Love. It is a raspberry sour ale by Martin House Brewing Company. And it says made in Texas by Texans. And we are both Texans that love nice. pets. And what Cheers. is more true love? What is more true love than like investing in your pet's fitness? Like I can't think of more <laughs> true love than that. Absolutely. So I am going to get into all that. Oh, wait, about we have your... cheers first now. Oh, wait. Yes. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Oh, that's good. I want to learn. Good. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it for one of my next shows. I'm going to have Absolutely. It. It's really good. I have it and I'm going to shout out to you. Last time we did a Miami based sh- uh, game, but today we're focusing on canine fitness. Right. So I want to play working on canine fitness. I am going to play a game where I'm just asking you quick fire questions. So you have to do your best to respond very quickly to my okay. questions. Are you ready to play? Yeah, let's do it. All, All right. right. I'm, what I'm is- ready. I'm ready. You're ready. You're, you were born ready. All right. What is canine fitness? (laughs) I knew you were going to ask me that. And then all of a sudden my fit, my brain blinks. Canine fitness to me is the health of your pet from snout to tail, encompassing everything from the joints and the muscles and their athleticism and their ability to move and how they move and how they feel when they're moving. And then also the brain. Are they happy? Are they stressed out? Do they have anxiety? To me, canine fitness is everything about the animal from the snout to the tail. Perfect. So like us, we think about like working on our fitness, like going to the gym and like lifting weights. But really, when you're truly physically fit, it's your whole body that's physically fit. It's your whole body. You know, they say a, a happy dog is a healthy dog, but so many dogs are not happy because they're bored at home. They're not going yes. to exercise. They don't have interactive toys, which I'm sure we'll get into. So it's not just about the heart and the body. It's also about the mind. Ooh, okay. So can canine fitness address certain medical conditions? Like, is that something that you have clients reach out to you for? So in the state of Texas, I am allowed to provide physical fitness and canine fitness. However, I have to be monitored by a veterinarian. Um, And what that means is I cannot, I can treat ailments, post-surgery, arthritis, things like that, but I can't diagnose, which is outside of my my, uh, scope of practice. So right. do I have clients that call regarding that? Absolutely. I'm working with dogs right now, a, a number of them that have IBDD, a few of them that were lame and had surgery, but I have to work in conjunction with a veterinarian overseeing it to make sure that everything is working out properly. Amazing. Okay. I saw on your website that canine fitness can prevent injury. How yes. so? So just like you and I, if we were to lift weights, we can prevent perhaps you know, pulling our muscles in our shoulder. Or if we are stretching, it's gonna prevent pulling a muscle. The same thing goes for dogs. A lot of dogs end up being uh, compromised in their hind end, especially as they become seniors because their muscles atrophy, arthritis. And so if you work on those things and continue to work on them as they age, you can prevent things, uh, ailments from progressing and or injuries to happen. How young can a dog start working on its fitness? From day one. I mean, it, it, it varies from puppies through seniors. 
but you're always working on a dog's fitness. You want them to move appropriately. You want their gates to be, um, you know, you want them to move properly. You want them to yeah. move um, efficiently. You don't want them to have limps. You don't want them to cross their hind legs. You want them always to be at their at their peak performance. So, yeah. you know, you could have puppies that were strays or weren't nursed correctly by their moms or might have been in a cage for the first six months. Or even like my dog, who was perfectly fine from the day he was born, he unfortunately lacks muscle tone in his hind quarters because that's just his his anatomy. Right. So right. you want to work on that from day one. Now, there are certain things you wouldn't do with a puppy until they're perhaps 13 months to 16 months because their body, their bones aren't used and their joints aren't ready. Like you wouldn't run them on a treadmill at, you know, right. 10 weeks or 10 months, but you can always work on their conditioning. Perfect. What kind of stretching is involved, if any? There's two types of stretches that you can do. One is passive stretch, pass, or you can do um, regular stretching. And so what you want to do, it's hard to explain unless you see it. But, um, you know, stress, if you were to um, extend their leg, let's say in front of them, you know, you're getting a really deep stretch in their yeah. shoulder blades and in all of their, their, their muscles. And so you want to make sure that as you're working with your dogs, stretch is very important because they lay yeah. around, they curl up in balls, they tend to um, overcompensate if they have a limp on one side. So stretching is really important, just like you and I. You know, the more yeah. limber we are, the better. Yeah, absolutely. And I saw on your website that Canine Fitness helps dogs develop their endurance. Why do dogs need endurance? What is it? What is it for? So for most dogs, like pet dogs, we wouldn't necessarily work on endurance the same way you would work on a dog that's perhaps a working dog, a service dog, or maybe participates in events like barn hunt or lure or fast cat or agility. However, endurance is essentially being able to just move and, and have endurance to just be. So if you have an animal that is 20 pounds overweight, their endurance is going to be really limited in the, yes. in, in the movement that they can produ produce or in being able to go on a simple walk or getting up the stairs if they have to. So working on endurance for the heart and the body is really important for, for just general living. However, you right. work on endurance differently depending upon the dog's activity, health, condition, age, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's so true because coming, going up the stairs, going down the street to get the mail, especially in the heat, say, yeah. you know, versus like a nice cool day, it does affect them. Just like when we go up the stairs and we're like winded and we're like, oh Absolutely. my gosh, I got to get back to the gym. It is a quality of life thing. It is a quality and of life thing. You know, you it have really a is. dog that has arthritis and now they're getting a little heavy because they're a senior and they're, you're, they're laying around their quality of life isn't going to be as great if they can't get up the stairs and lay next to their, their dad or mom yeah, you know, on the exactly. floor or being able to get in and out of a car or just simply taking yes. a walk around the block. It's so true. Absolutely. Yeah. We think of endurance as like heart, like your heart rate, but it's really just being able to even just move and, and, it, right. and participate in life for sure. Participate. So it's not just, it's not endurance. Isn't just about, you know, being able to run, you know, three miles at four minute yes. miles. Yeah. So what do you, what is the reason that most of your, this is my last question for this game. What is the reason you see most of your clients signing their pets up for canine fitness? Right now, I would say there's two things. Number one is um, overweight pets. Uh, you know, yes. canine obesity right now is, is an epidemic. And they say that between 50 and 55% of all, all pet dogs are overweight. So oh a lot goodness. of my calls are simply, um, my life has taken me, you know, to this place and I'm too busy and my dog is suffering because I can't get it outside and yep. I love my pet, but I need them to lose weight because they're going to die if I don't get weight off of them. Exactly. And then the second one are people who have dogs that are conditioned for sport, um, or, uh, they're a working dog or a service dog or a person who lived on a farm and the dog was used to running all day. And now he lives in an apartment in downtown Dallas and Yikes. he's lacking that ability to just move and, and be. 
Um, so those are the two um, that are most most common. And then on the, on the third, I would say are the ones that are calling whose dogs have had some type of ailment. Maybe they 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 have a luxating platella or their dog has a TPLO surgery or they have IVDD and they they need to have more formatted, structured workouts so that yes. their dogs can heal properly without getting re-injured or hurting what they've already hurt. Right, right, right. Of course, you don't want to turn that over to just anybody. They need to understand. Right. So tell me what you have been up to a lot since we last spoke. <laughs> when we first spoke, you were going to open up the Pack and Method Canine Gym mm -hmm. in Colorado. Uh -huh. Then slowly <laughs> but surely, I heard that you were in Dallas. And then I was yes. like, why is she in Dallas? And I found you, I saw you at the Texas Pet Sitters Conference and you had your canine gym there. It's a, <laughs> so describe this journey from Miami to Dallas via Colorado. So the goal had always been that we wanted to end up in Colorado um, and, or just, we wanted to leave Miami. We wanted to explore and our, our dream was always to go to Colorado, but we have family in Texas and two of them include little ones that are two and four, almost five. Aww. And we wanted to be active participants in their lives. And I have been fortunate and blessed to be able to help have raised my nieces and nephews on my side. They're older now. I have I have eight nieces and nephews on my side that are between 19 and 14. And wow. so my husband's nephews are little. They're little guys. And he's never been able to do that. So we honestly, we saw a house on Zillow and we took a tour via Zoom and we put an offer and we ended up buying a house <laughs> essentially with the help of our, my sister-in-law. And it just kind of, it worked out really well. You got to do it. You got to make, sometimes yeah. you have to make impulse decisions like that to get yourself out of your comfort zone. So you have a canine gym. Yes. Mobile canine gym. Describe yes. it for those who didn't tune in last time. Describe what you offer your Dallas pet parents. So I have a, I turned a Ford Transit passenger van into a mobile dog gym. It's climate controlled. And inside I have two different pieces of equipment. I have a slap mill, which most people have probably seen online. Um, it's a dog treadmill. The dog generates the motion. I can increase and decrease the resistance so I can work on, cool. you know, walking up hills or step work and muscle training or full blown cardiovascular endurance training. And then the second piece of equipment I have is called a pacer. It's another smaller treadmill. That's um, it, it. It's an electrical piece of a, a device and you can essentially uh, track a dog's distance, speed, time and caloric burn. And so it's used differently, but the same, if that makes sense. So I can work them out yeah. the same, increase and decrease the resistance. However, on the pacer, I use that more for do larger dogs because the okay. center of gravity on the, tr on the slap mill can sometimes be scary. Um, dogs who are overweight can't necessarily push the machine on the slap mill. Right. And I don't want them to hurt themselves because they will be achy. Um, smaller dogs, dogs that are, might be in rehab, um, fearful dogs, and some of my incredibly, incredibly intelligent female dogs, because they get on the slat and they're like, I'm not doing this. And then they get on the pacer and they're perfect. So it oh. really depends on the animal, what we're working them for, um, and where they are physically, because not every dog can get on a slat mill and immediately move it. They'll hurt themselves. Got it. Yeah. It sounds like a lot of work. I'm exhausted just thinking about it. I, it's like one of those manual lawnmowers that you have to push. Yes. <laughs> so we exhausted. had one of those in Miami. <laughs> we we had one and we used it maybe twice because it's a lot of work. Well, I can tell you one day I am out there pushing that thing and a gentleman walks by and he looks at me and he said, either you lost the bet or there's a bet happening in your house. And I said, there's a bet. My husband didn't think I could do this. And he's like, I hope you win. And I'm like, I'm going to win. It was the last time I ever pushed it. Yeah, I never tried it. It was my husband's idea. I was like, I'm not doing it. There's one thing I don't do in this house and it's lawn mowing. So yeah, like I, I literally draw the, the line there. I don't care what machine you give me. I'm not doing it. Um, so w what have Dallas pet lovers, pet parents, dog parents told you about this? Like, are they super receptive to it? Was there a learning curve? Tell me about that. So 
I have gone about this um, very, very, um, I go about this slowly with people. They need to marinate on it because what's happening is they see this online. They're seeing it. They're, you know, mobile gyms are, are popping up all over the yes. country and people are seeing it online. And unfortunately, there's an educational piece to it because everybody nowadays wants instant gratification. So the question 100%. isn't, isn't, you know, um, why is this important for my dog and what what will my dog gain from it? It's how fast will they do it? And I want them to run and I want to film this for Instagram. And so I have, I go about my business in, differently than most that you've seen online. Um, I, I make sure that the animals are happy and, and content in the van. You have dogs that hate, hate cars. And now right. you're asking them to get into a strange van that <laughs> smells like other dogs to get on this device to perform, a, you know, a, a, a essentially a service for me. So yeah. I go about it incredibly sm slow and methodically. So, you know, it takes, it takes some dogs. I've had dogs where it takes two and three times just to get them in the van, get them on the machine yeah. and lure them with food, where then you have other dogs that pop on there and they're ready to go. Um, I have not had anything negative in Dallas. People are excited about it. Um, they're fascinated by it. Um, anytime you hear about it, they're at a mobile gym and they want to know and they want to see it and they ask yeah. questions. I think it's a matter of education and um, making sure that expectations are, are, are not set at this high because yeah. not every dog can, can do it or should they do it. Um, right. you know, yeah. with my background being with rehabilitation and animal behavior, I go about it a little bit differently than maybe other people. So yes. um, the owners are there the first time and I walk them okay. through what their own, you know, what the dog's going to look like. And I explain to them that the dog looks like um, they have, you know, sea legs. They're a little bit shaky in the beginning. And then I'll explain how they come to getting their regular posture and when their gait starts to perform naturally. And you see the shift. And if an owner has the patience to get through that, then it's, it's, it's a marriage. Um, you know, I've, I've only had one dog here that just, he couldn't do it. He shouldn't have done it. And we retired him after 10 minutes. It was, we were going to bring him and it wasn't right for what him. What was it? What, what, was he too old? No, he, he was a, a, about a two-year-old lab and um, his socialization wasn't the greatest and he lacked a lot of confidence. And he was very yeah. attached to his owners and he was the sweetest, but he just, he couldn't get out of his mental state. Yeah. And this isn't just an exercise for the body. Right. This is an animal learning something new. And for those dogs that grasp it, they, you see them, like their confidence is there and their behavior changes and they stop ripping up, you know, towels in the house yes. and they stop chewing themselves this guy just couldn't get out of his head and Ooh. he needed, he needed training before he got, got into it. my van. So, yeah. um, I, I, I will not work out every dog if I feel like they're going to have a bad experience because this isn't yeah. about a bad experience. I want them running in there being like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's so. fun time. Yeah. Like my kid at urban air, like he runs around in circles and runs and jumps on trampolines by will because he loves it and he likes it. it not right. because i'm forcing him to jump on a trampoline right so it, right. there's a lot of consent there which i think is so important right you want them to willingly participate in this exercise not be forced to because then it doesn't doesn't have all the benefits for the mental yeah. physical emotional wellness that you're trying to achieve i think i've always said it was an amazing concept i love it we don't have anything like that in el paso again i do think that education is lacking in a lot of ways here when it comes to pet parenting for me as somebody who's been in the industry for 15 years like you tell me a mobile canine gym and i'm like oh my gosh so many people need that but for somebody who maybe just got their first pet they're like my my dog plays with the neighbor's dog totally different totally, totally different. different and you know the education piece is um the way I explain this to people is what they'll say, why does my dog need it? They go to the dog park, they go, they have play dates, they go on walks. 
So the way I explain it is a dog walk is sensory. They go out, they sniff around, they pee, they poop, they chase squirrels, they look at lizards, they look at cars going by, but they're stopping and starting. And at the dog park, it's a social, you know, social, right? Right. They go, they see people, they see dogs, they're stopping and starting. But both of those activities are not 30 minutes of non-interrupted exercise. So then you get these guys on the treadmill and they are going for 30 minutes. They're not being interrupted. It's, they're not pounding on concrete. They're not getting body slammed by dogs and it's controlled. So now, and they have to, if they're on the, on the slat mill, now they have to propel the machine. So they're learning a new skill while gaining confidence and getting that burnout that it doesn't matter if it's a Chihuahua or a Great Dane, they need Mm -hmm. to sweat. They need the burnout. Um, and so that's how I explain it. And then once people are like, Oh, I get that, you know, Samson, when we go out for a walk, it's like he sniffs every blade of grass and an hour after we get home, he's, he's not exhausted. I'm like, that's, that's why. And then the other thing is, you know, you're in El Paso and we're both Floridians. It was 104 degrees the other day. Heat index. And so the concrete is, is just on fire. The dogs can't walk and you don't want to go out there. It's it's horrible. So, um, (laughs) you know, whether it's storming or snowing or raining or just you being lazy, it's an option. Yeah, no, it's a fantastic option. It's, I compare it to like going to the club and dancing. Yeah. Like you're going to the club and dancing and you're burning calories, but it's not like doing like an Ashtanga yoga class where you're super focused on your inhale and your exhale and you're this and you're that. So it's yeah, calorie burn is great, but it has to be what you're describing is like controlled and you have a history of like rehabilitation and physical therapy. Your dad, if I remember correctly, was a physical therapist. Yeah. So you He's grew up surgeon, knowing yeah. about that. Yeah. So my dad was an orthopedist. So I kind of grew up go. in that world. Um, but I, I couldn't deal with blood and people. Blood. Yeah. Yeah. I can deal with it on pets. No, I think, on people. I think you, you, I definitely think the career path you chose was a less messy one even though pets can be messy Uh i think surgery definitely would well i want to take a break right here and when we come back i want to actually dig into something else that you offer dallas pet parents canine massage so don't go anywhere i will be right back with nicole packen molly here's your dinner (laughs) zeus that's not your food Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your Cat Tree Tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I am speaking to Nicole Packen. She's the founder of Miami Pet Concierge, who has been around for a long, long time <laughs> helping pet parents in Miami, and she recently launched the Packen Method in Dallas, Texas. Uh, she also happens to be a canine massage therapist. So I, Nicole, would like to learn more about canine massage as somebody who has tried a lot of maybe woo woo things with my pets. I have never had my pets have a massage. So I have a lot of questions and I'm going to ask you some of them in game. Number two, I named this game dog heart, warm hands. Cause I have all sorts of questions about massage and dogs. Are you ready to play? I am ready to play. All right. If you can, would you give me the top three benefits of canine massage from your perspective? Absolutely. It helps with circulation. It helps with muscle recovery and it helps with behavior. Ooh. Oh yeah. All three different areas. Can puppies, 
Okay, I wanna I wanna get into the behavior real quick before I go to my next question. How does it help behavior? I thought you, I, I had a feeling you were gonna get tripped up by that one because a lot of people are like, wait a second, what? So yeah. the simplest thing, the simple explanation is when we go and we pet dogs, people's instinct is to pet, 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 pet. And it's that fun pet. However, when you have a dog that has perhaps had abuse in its life, they have anxiety, um, they're they're not confident, they're insecure. Now they have to sit and stay still while someone's pet, and essentially petting them very differently when, than what they're used to. And yeah. so it's one of those hurt so good, you know, that thing, you know, sometimes where you're like, oh gosh, that feels good. Oh gosh, I don't know. Or it tickles, but you kind of like it, you go back for more. So imagine you're asking a dog to sit still and you're working their body and they're like, okay, this is really uncomfortable. Oh, I like this. And then they walk around and they shake it off and they come back. It helps with them learning to just trust themselves and to Ooh. get out of their head. It's, it's really unbelievable if you, if you work with dogs that have especially aggression um, or just Ooh. dogs that have behaviors, it can really help them get out of them constantly being What's next? Where am I? Who's going to hurt me? What's yeah. going to happen? What am I going to get dead? It calms them down. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. So can puppies stay put long enough to be massaged? I mean, any dog can sit through a massage if they like it. A lot of them have ants in their pants. The goal Got isn't it. to force them to sit there. It's to honor what they're feeling. So when I massage a dog, whether they're eight weeks or 18 years, a lot of them in the beginning, they'll sit and they'll kind of look around. They might get up and shake the stress off. They might yawn. They might roll on their stomach or on their back. Um, and then as you provide massages, they get more and more accustomed to the touch right. and what you're asking of them. What's interesting of all ages is that when you're doing it, if there's something that's bothering them, a lot of them will signal. So whether it's a puppy, a middle-aged dog or a senior, they might lick you. They might chewy Louie. They might turn uh -huh. and want and dogs that I work with that have had continual massages, they'll and sometimes will turn their bodies where they want you to work them. Uh, it's pretty yeah. yeah, so it's pretty interesting to watch them because they'll just be like, nope, today I want this. And they'll literally move into you where others might signal and not like it because it's uncomfortable and different. Yeah, yeah, no, that sounds great. That sounds amazing. I, I would do that too. It's the same way we would say like, I'm right, I'm tight right yeah. here. Can we work a little extra on yeah. that shoulder just like with your massage therapist? Um, how does massage help aging dogs? In what ways do you work with them? It's about comfort. It's about keeping their circulation. It's about getting in there and making sure that they're, if, if they do have any type of arthritis, perhaps they might be struggling from degenerative myelopathy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's helping keep them limber. Um, it's helping keep the joints lubricated. Yes. Um, it's making their muscles not as stiff. So just like you and I, if we are, you know, sedentary and we don't move and we sit in this chair for, the, you know, eight hours and we get up, we feel kind of gunky. So it's the yeah. same thing for senior pets. It's just getting everything moving and being able to move their body. And a lot of massage is also stretching as well. So it's just yeah. helping them. It's honestly, it's helping them stay limber and, and lubricated and their joints functioning. It kind of also feels like maybe there's a little bit of energy moving, like where there's kind of not, you're, you're not a Reiki therapist, I'm you're not, not a Reiki, Reiki therapist. practitioner, but still there is like that when you move the circle, when the, the blood circulates, there's also a movement of energy, isn't there? There's absolutely energy in there. And, you know, you can do things, you, you know, you can work on their lymphatic drainage. You can work on, you know, their adrenals. You can work on, you know, even an animal, depending upon what type of cancers, some massage therapy does not benefit it where others might. Right. Um, but, you know, end of life. I have a dog here in Dallas. He's riddled with cancer and they gave him six oh. weeks and he's been alive three months. But just allowing the, you know, moving and flushing him out just makes him yes. feel better. Um, and so it, it really, it depends on the dog and it depends on yeah. you know, the age and, and their athleticism and their, all of that.
Right. And I saw on your website that there's a detox aspect to it, which I guess you kind of talked about with the adrenals and the lymphatic system. So a lot of the times, um, say, for instance, your dog goes in for a dental or gets spayed and neutered. Um, you can flush the toxins out using massage ah. to get the after effects of anesthesia. And so mm-hmm. a lot of the times people will say, hey, my dog's getting surgery today. Can you come in the next two days just to kind of flush that gunk out? Yes. And it helps them recuperate faster. That's great. And how do vets feel about canine massage in your experience? So it's interesting because in Miami, um, I got a little bit of, I don't want to say backlash, but veterinarians thought, you know, oh, this is woo woo. We don't need this. Mm-hmm. Dogs don't need it. You know, put them in crates for 10 weeks after neck surgery and then have them <laughs> do physical therapy. And coming from, you know, an orthopedic daughter who knows that after surgery, the, the best thing you can do is get your body moving to flush, right. flush, flush. I, I don't essentially, I don't really agree with that here. Yes. Um, I've had a lot more um, positivity. And I think that I, I think the vets here might be a little bit more progressive, um, but they they understand the importance of it. The difference here, though, is that in the state of Texas, massage and chiropractic has been kind of lumped together. So Ooh. you have to have um, you have to have forms filled out and things like that because they don't want you to manipulate and a right. massage therapist doesn't mani- 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 no. No, manipulate. Um, right. But here it's been really receptive and especially dogs that are working or, and what I mean by working is recreating the same uh, movements. So maybe they're uh, pulling a wheelchair or winding ah. in the leaves or, you know, working. It's the same repetitive repetitive uh, movements that they need work on those on those muscles so that they don't um, get into any you know trouble or injury right yeah yeah like they over overuse basically like, uh, absolutely. What happens with us, isn't it so tell me this is my last question I know it's a really silly question but we always think of like massage therapy as like aromatherapy in the room and then um, like an oil being like <laughs> lathered on you what are we, what should we be imagining when we think of a canine massage? What does it look like? Quiet room. I I will normally do it in a client's house. I can do it in the van, but I prefer to have more space. Always want them to be comfortable. So on their favorite bed, on their favorite blanket, on the, you know, wherever they enjoy it. And then depending upon the animal, um, I use essential oils to help calm them you can mix. Um, I prefer using a little bit of peppermint and a little bit of lavender and a little wild orange, and you can just spritz it around there to kind of calm them. Calm them. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, depending upon the dogs, I will play massage therapy music for. <laughs> Only because some it. of them really like it. I mean, some yeah, of them no. really, they kind of get into that that like zen mode yes. and they just kind of chill out. So it depends on the dog, um, but. Most of them here in Dallas, they, they like their music. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it, I mean, it's, I always, when I want massage therapy music, I, I use like Reiki music as my search and I do immediately feel like there's a change in my mood. There's There's a change change in like everything in my energy because of that music. And we, there are studies that show that dogs really do resonate with classical music and things like that. So certain instruments they react differently to. So I think it's perfect. Do you ever use like heat and cold? Like, let's say like the human equivalent would be like a hot stone or something. Do you ever use stuff I like don't. that? I don't. I um, don't. You know, in the physical fitness part of it, I will use uh, rubber bands and things like that to help them uh, to concentrate on certain muscles. But I do not use any warm or cold because I don't that's a part of rehabilitation that is yes. under, you know, not, a, not in my scope of practice. It's, now, yeah, I could, I could do it for my own dogs, but I, I don't offer that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Super cool. I mean, I'm just curious as to, I guess we, I had a, a guest on the show recently, not too long ago, Angela Artelino. And I, we played woo woo would you, which is like a classic game I play. <laughs> and I asked her all these questions about pet Reiki, pet massage. And she said, Anything that we 
get benefit from, chances are our paths Absolutely. are going to get benefit from. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Yes. And I can tell you music, the music is, um, they've, like you said, there's been studies about how music has helped animals. And I can tell you that I have animals in the gym who I have a set list for a couple of them and we call it our dance party. And I have a couple oh of God. them that will only run if that is on versus <gasps> other dogs that really like that spa Zen feeling. And I turn on that music and it calms them where I have other dogs that want complete silence. So, I mean, yeah, it, you know, it, it, if it benefits us, it absolutely can benefit them. It's so it's funny you to say that because I, I listen to a lot of podcasts and one of them is like a Bravo podcast. And apparently a lot of runners listen to that podcast while they're running. I listen to it while I'm cleaning house. Like I always think like if I was running, the last thing I'd want is to like talk about the real housewives or Vanderpump rules. I'd want to <laughs> be like with my Zumba music, my reggaeton, my salsa, my like pop music. So it really is a personal choice. Everybody it, wants what makes them, what motivates them. When I, I was a marathon runner years ago and I used to um, just click through channels because I felt like if you listen to the whole song, it just felt like that mile was taking forever. So if I would listen really? to a few minutes and then, or talk radio, because talk radio goes on forever, a little NPR on a, on a 10 mile run, it can get you through it because it's always I mean, it would changing. Have it would just have to be about pets. If it was about anything else, I would be like snoozing in the nearest like park bench. So no, absolutely. I need my like, like really loud Latin music or pop music. So what do, okay. I got kind of want to get more into the logistics of it too. Like how often are dogs recommended sure. to get massage and how quickly do you see any results? So, um, massage can be done a few times a week depending i guess it depends on on what you're doing it for Got it. um if you're rehabbing animals that say post surgery or um you know yeah post surgery you could do it a couple times a week do they need it often no just like us i mean once a week once a month it really depends right um you know and and the benefits are the more you do it the more you see However, right. you can also overdo it because you need, you know, you need those muscles to, to, you know, relax and, and heal. Um, right. So I see some dogs twice a week. I see some dogs once a week. I see some dogs once every two weeks. It doesn't right. matter. They're going to benefit from that work. Um, and you can see benefits from the first time and some dogs, depending upon how, how, you know, if they can sit still and how much work you can get done on them, it might take a couple sessions, but to me, just getting your hands on them is a benefit. Absolutely. You know, the fitness, I always recommend if you want to see results, you need to do it more often than not. And I tell people do it okay. twice a week. Um, once a week you'll see benefits, but if you start missing and you start doing it every three weeks, every month, there's a learning curve. You have to go back and yeah. kind of start over a little bit. Um, it's just like, you know, with us, if we only run once a month, we're really not going to see a lot of benefits. You're going to be exhausted that one time, but I call yeah. that the weekend warrior, you know, the dogs that yeah. go out to the park once a week and then they're exhausted Monday through Wednesday. Yes. That's not what we're looking for. You know, we're looking for dogs that are going to get um, whether it's on the treadmill or their physical fitness or their massage and they get it, you know, on a regular basis where the benefits build each time. Would you recommend they go together massage and physical fitness often? I, I do. I think nowadays, I don't think people realize that dogs hold about 65 to 70, 70% 70 of their weight on their front quarters. And Ooh. so they're, the hind legs do not, they're, they're used, but they're not as strong as they should be in most cases. So I think that if you have a dog that is weaker in the hind quarters, you can get benefits from the treadmill, physical fitness, using their body weight to do uh, exercises is a yes. And then massage is always a recovery benefit. Yes. Um, for my seniors, I always tell people, if you really want to help them, have them do the treadmill and maybe every third, fourth time add in a targeted massage where if they have a shoulder issue or a hip issue, let's just work on that one area. But massage is always a great recovery tool. I mean, all endurance athletes and athletes use mas massage to help yes. um, heal. So I think it's, it's a benefit, but 
some people want want to and some people don't. Right. I feel like, again, it's one of those things where I think a lot of us culturally are conditioned that it's just a dog. So like, if I'm right. not investing the money in my body, I'm probably not going to be doing it for my pet. But they age so much more quickly than we do. They do. That I think that we don't, we can't really compare it. It's not, you know, we're our different. We're not even the same. Like, we're, they're not primates. Like, we're very yeah. different structurally and all right. that. So I oh, do yeah. think that people need to think beyond, like, Oh, massage. We think of it as like a relaxation for them. They're aging very, very quickly. Their wear and tear is a lot faster than ours in, you know, the average person versus the average pet or dog. So I, I agree. I think it's like one of those things where you kind of initially say, I pay for my dog to get a massage. But if you really dig a little bit deeper, you're like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. I think um, when people start realizing that obviously is when they start seeing their their dogs showing signs of age and animals have a different threshold for pain tolerance and showing us when they're distressed or showing us us when they're not feeling well so a lot of the time where you know they should have been being seen here they're being seen here um yes. so you know it's dogs do age faster and larger dogs especially i mean Oof, you know larger yeah. dogs you know, at, at seven and eight, they're seniors. I mean, some of these breeds yeah. only live until they're eight or nine years old. Right. So to me, it's about starting them young, um, keeping them active, keeping them healthy and maintaining their body. And, you know, just like us, we didn't, you know, I didn't start working out at, you know, 40 years old. I was working out and, and playing soccer as early as four years old. Yes. So it's, it's, it's the same thing. But I think nowadays where physical fitness is becoming more of a mainstream topic, it's everywhere. Now we're seeing it become a, becoming more spoken about in the canine world because be, nobody, you know, people thought, oh, we'll just put our dog in the backyard and they'll run around. They don't. Yeah, they don't. They no. don't. No. Especially not in the heat that you described earlier. Yeah. Absolutely not. No. So how can my audience learn more about your offerings? And do you plan on... Um, you know, branching out to any other cities or locations. We're talking about that now. Um, so yes, we will be expanding, um, but we'll have to talk about that at another time because we're still okay. figuring it out. Um, Perfect. But they can reach me by looking, at, they can go to Facebook, they can go to Instagram, they can go to the website, thepackandmethod.com. Um, they can email me, Nicole at thepackandmethod.com. And if anybody has any questions about, you know, starting their own, uh, Jim, I'm going to be consulting for people that want nice. to, Nice. that's going to be my new venture is to, to consult for people that want to do it, to do it correctly and safely. Very cool. I don't know. My husband has plans for after retirement, but I wouldn't be a, opposed to him starting a canine gym here in El Paso, Texas. Chris, you absolutely if you're listening. Should. There I was know, one actually in Houston they were selling and I, and I was looking into that, but, um, oh, I think really? it's, yeah, it's well, a lot. I mean, it's a lot of work, right? It's a lot of physical, physical it's, work, right? It because is a lot you of are work. Using... I mean, I, I don't have a staff here because I want to monitor it right now. Right. Um, and I think that it's easy, you can easily start it, but I think that if you don't have the knowledge and yeah. you don't have, um, the the time working with dogs it could be a disaster yes. and i i say this to anyone that's interested in this this is my psa what you see on instagram and what you see on social media is not what you get when you're in the van and it's all fun and games to have them run but there's a lot behind the scenes to make sure that we're not hurting them and my biggest fear is that this is becoming a very popular tool and I think it's an important tool. And I'm worried that if people aren't looking at it and studying and making sure that they're educated, it's going to get torn apart. And that's right. my biggest fear. Because if you look online right now, you're seeing dogs that are being run that are way too young, have Ooh. ailments they shouldn't be run. You know, they, you know, it's yeah. just, it's, it's kind of frightening to watch. It's no different than people starting a mobile groomer who've never Absolutely. groomed a pet in their life. And now they're going to start grooming pets and grooming is a skill and an art that people develop over years. I 
follow a ton of groomers where they show you the first dog they groomed and now like the millionth dog they groomed and they're like oh gosh i was so bad at this before. so bad and it's like and an everyday it's practice true. it's true and i mean from i've learned so much every day i learn something yes. new but you know the biggest the biggest issue is you may get a dog in that van and you could get attacked by a dog in that right. van. Right. You know, if yeah, you don't it's know just you. Language. Yeah. Or, you know, you could push them to the point where they get injured. And so that's kind of, you know, I, 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 I deliberately and methodically do what I do for the safety and integrity of yes. myself and my business. But the most importantly is that dog's body. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the pet parent that trusts you with that dog's body, right? Like yeah. the, you made the commitment to them that you were going to take care of their pet. This is not just a way to pay your bills, people. I'm not talking to Nicole. Nicole knows this. How long have you been in the pet industry? 20 years. Okay. So that that's all that we need to say there. <laughs> yeah. I, when I tell years. you that the Miami Pet Concierge is like the OG, like pet sitting dog walking business in Miami. She's cared for thousands of animals, <laughs> if not more thousands upon thousands of animals over the years so there is an expert in your midst and that is nicole so if you are thinking of doing this please do reach Call out me. whether it's to have your pets to taken care of or if it's because you want to start your own venture like this well i just want to propose a toast to you nicole thank Yay! you again for being thank my you. guest again cheers, cheers. I also want to propose a toast to my executive producer, Mark Winter. Cheers. Here's to you, Mark. And to our audience, thank you for joining us for these awesome conversations. I can't wait to bring you more awesome experts like Nicole. I only bring you the best. Trust me when I tell you, I only bring you the best. So here's to a life covered in pet hair. There's no better way to live. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for having me again. It's always my pleasure to see you, my dear friend. Always. To learn more about covered in pet hair, please visit coveredinpethair.com or petliferadio.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.